Hello and welcome to my presentation on the importance of saving the Oregon mountain range. Roughly 250 miles from Albuquerque lies one of the most beautiful and raw mountain ranges in the United States. Formed in lava as it erupted from the tumultuous core of the earth millions of years ago, the Oregon Mountains stand as a testament to the rough but incredible core of our universe, which spans millennia. This small but incredible range has captured the adventurous and curious spirit of mankind for thousands of years. It contains cave paintings, flints, stone tools, and arrowheads. Mining equipment from a bygone era of cowboys and frontier justice has been found winding through its twisted and tangling caves. Today, the Oregon Mountains rise high above the flat Chihuahuan Desert in a vivid display of strength, which the Spanish conquistadors likened to the pipes of great organs in the cathedrals far away in Europe. The Oregon Mountain Range stands just over 9,000 feet high at its highest spire. Unlike nearby mountain ranges, which were formed in calmer prehistoric seas, the Oregon Mountain Range was formed in an enormous volcanic eruption around 32 million years ago. This is why the mountains are much rougher than any other range. They are home to three species that cannot live anywhere else in the world. The ruby-throated hummingbird, the Oregon Mountain pincushion cactus, and the Oregon Mountain Colorado chipmunk call this mountain range and only this mountain range home. Additionally, a multitude of species thrive on the springs which bubble up at seven points in the mountain range, including mule deer and golden eagles. Unfortunately, the species and history found in the Oregon Mountains is fighting the losing battle with a much stronger foe, mankind. Off-road vehicles, the vagueness of the Wilderness Protection Act, and the existence and desire for rare earth minerals draw a threat of mining and development ever nearer the wilds of the Oregons. Without protection, the Oregon Mountains will be permanently disfigured and destroyed by human endeavors. Through the course of this presentation, I will discuss how human encroachment is highly destructive to the Oregon Mountains and how that damage can never be reversed. I will go on to discuss the Wilderness Protection Act and how it applies to the Oregon Mountains. I will discuss a solution to the danger facing the Oregon Mountains, educating people on the beauty and wonder it contains, and then the costs and benefits and budget required for the proposed solution. We can solve the problem facing the Oregon Mountains if we start now. Human encroachment is by far the largest problem facing the Oregon Mountains today. This includes mining. The Oregon Mountains have been mined for over a century in search of gold, coal, silver, and other important minerals. Their landscape is already scarred with old mines, tunnels, cart tracks, and small settlements. While these mines help educate people on the history of the Southwest, they also encourage further mining. The picture shown on this slide shows the largest mine ever in the Oregon Mountains. While it doesn't stand as much more than a fallen down wooden buildings and some mining cart rails through the tunnels, it caused a great deal of destruction to the face of the mountain range. In 2013, the New Mexico Institute of Mining and Technology released a study which confirmed the existence and quantity of rare earth minerals within the Oregon Mountains. As the periodic table of elements you are looking at shows, rare earth minerals are those elements which make all the technology we have today possible. Small handheld electronics, green energy, medical technology, and essential telecommunications and defense technology could not exist today without rare earth minerals. There are 17 rare earth elements on the periodic table. Uh, they consist of two transition metals and the rest are lanthanides. Eight of these are essential to the function of an iPhone. In 2010, China revealed that they were running out of rare earth minerals, and since that time, the United States has been in a mad scramble to source domestic rare earth minerals. In 2000, China accounted for 95% of the world's rare earth minerals. Their reports of a decrease in availability of these essential elements could mean a significant rise in the price of any technology made with them and the availability of that technology. The tables you're looking at now show how important rare earth elements are to technology we really take for granted today. As you can see in the top table, uh, green energy cars would not exist and iPhones certainly wouldn't work without a myriad of rare earth elements. 
The tables at the bottom show the short and long-term criticality matrices for select rare earth minerals. So while not all the elements are shown on these tables, it does illustrate exactly how badly we need some of them and how quickly the supply risk is uh, rising to a critical level in which we may actually run out of these and not be able to create some of the technologies we use so frequently today. The Wilderness Protection Act was passed by Congress in 1964. Its main purpose is to protect undeveloped lands, retaining their primeval character and influence without permanent in improvements or human habitation, which is protected and managed so as to preserve its natural conditions. Fifty years later, we are still arguing over the true extent of the Wilderness Protection Act. Arguments often arise when Congress attempts to determine what a wilderness area is. Conflict arises when a proposed wilderness area is known to contain important materials such as oil or mineral deposit, important water reserves, or is already very near a developed area. In the case of the Oregon Mountains, many argued that the pre-existence of mining equipment and tunnels meant that it did not retain its primeval character and influence without permanent improvements or human habitation. Many believed that this was a reason to go ahead with mining for rare earth minerals within the mountain range. Fortunately, in May of 2014, the long battle over the official status of the Oregon Mountain Range came to an end. On May 21st, President Barack Obama officially established the Oregon Mountains Desert Peaks National Monument. The site is safe from mining for now. It is officially designated as a national monument and cannot be touched by industrial development. But the fight is far from over. Without funding, the Oregon Mountains Desert Peaks National Monument will sit alone in the middle of the Chihuahuan Desert until an extreme desire and need of rare earth elements ignites a new debate which may result in the removal of national monument status. Educating future generations on the importance of the history and natural wonder of the Oregon Mountains will inspire them to renew their spirit of adventure and their love of learning and the natural world around them. According to Richard Louv in his book, Last Child in the Woods, children of the technological generation exhibit signs of natural deficit disorder. Essentially, what this means is that they have no connection to the outside natural world. They are so engulfed in technology and materialism, they do not care what happens to it and are afraid when they are outside in it. Louv asserts that educating children outdoors and bringing them further out into the world to learn about it is the key to, quote, saving our children from nature deficit disorder. The proposed solution involves establishing a children's learning center at the Oregon Mountains Desert Peaks National Monument and then hiring a full staff of educators and rangers to work with children and take them out into the mountain monument to learn about the natural world so close to them. Additionally, the proposed solution includes establishing a $1,000 grant for each of 300 elementary and middle schools in New Mexico each year to cover the costs of transporting students and chaperones to the, mountain, the mountain monument to take part in outdoor learning activities. Educating children is the key to ensuring the safety of the Oregon Mountains. Establishing a connection to the mountains, which will follow them through their lives, will help ensure that the mountains are never endangered by human encroachment again. This slide highlights the costs of the proposed solution. Each year, $300,000 in grant money will be allocated to 300 different elementary and middle schools uh, for doing projects and traveling to the Oregon Mountains National Monument. Additionally, a salary for 20 employees, approximately $600,000, will be provided annually. The benefits for this solution are innumerable, but these are a few of the highlights. Future generations will be educated in the importance of saving our natural wonders. They will be connected to and care about the future and success of our natural world. And the Oregon Mountains Desert Peaks National Monument will be preserved for centuries to come for millions to enjoy. The budget of the proposed solution is $1 million annually plus an initial cost of $3 million to build and open the Children's Learning Center at the National Monument. The Children's Learning Center should focus not only on the natural wonder of Desert Peaks National Monument, but also on 
uh, demonstrating clean green technology for children to understand its importance and how it can be applied to their lives. The Oregon Mountains need our help to continue to be beautiful and full of life, and we can help them by educating future generations at a children's learning center at the Oregon Mountains Desert Peaks National Monument. My work cited consists of Desert USA reports and articles, Wilderness Exceptions Environmental Law of Spring 2014 by John Copeland Nagel, Oregon Peaks Desert Peaks National Monument, and Rare Element Resources. Images came primarily from Desert USA, and secondary images were sourced from Oregon Mountains Desert Peak National Monument. Thank you for watching my presentation. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you consider the essential nature of the proposed solution.